because today we are going to be elevating, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to be using the information that's around us that's easily accessible to start making deductions about what could possibly be happening at a global scale. So, pen and paper, non-negotiable, unquestionable, is the way to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about the most powerful banker in America. The most powerful banker in America. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand not only how people make money at the highest echelons of society, but you will be encouraged to understand a little bit more of how the system works. In the chat, ladies and gentlemen, where are you joining us from? We got Akash, said love you, bro. Appreciate the 44 pounds with 50 cents, with 99 cents, brother. It'll go back straight into the stream to continue making this an incredible experience to continue learning, developing, and growing. So, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about the most powerful banker in America. But before we do that, I got a little, uh, I got a little Twitter, I got a little Twitter uh, profile, uh, a little Twitter video I want to react to. I haven't watched this yet, but I saw it on my, uh, on my Twitter feed. And we've been hearing about this massive nonsense about, uh... Ukraine this, Ukraine that. You know, we see it all the time trending on our For You page. Fortunately, today it's not there. But we need to understand that a lot of this is planned, right? And everybody now on their profiles, they have their, you know, so solidarity for the for uh, Ukraine, just like they had solidarity for Black Lives Matter and they changed their profile photo. But here we have people being asked where is the Ukraine on a map? Now, I'm not saying that you need to know every single country where it's located around the world. If you do, good for you. But if you are in support and in solidarity of something, at least have some knowledge about what you're talking about. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Let's see what is going on. Over right here? So if that's your friend, where's Russia? Isn't that the little island right here? The, the little country is invading the, the big one. And they're gonna lose, I guess. Okay, where is Ukraine on a map? That's a great question. Next to Russia. <laughs> somewhere here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It's just like over here somewhere. Okay. And then like, there's Ukraine. I don't okay. know. That's why I'm like low-key confused why they're attacking them. Right here. Right there? Yeah. Okay, so where's Russia? Um, right here. Where I mean, is it's based on the map? Can you find it? Right there? So, okay, so where's Russia? Right there? Oh, this is... You, you got me. You got me. Oh, damn. Do you realize it's all peasants? It's all peasants. Have you seen the American school system where they teach you zero about what's happening around the world? That's your break? So where's Russia? <laughs> That's uh, no, Russia. Uh, I don't fucking know. And, and then you wonder why people are poor. And then you wonder why people are broke and stupid. This is, this is the average individual in society. Oh. Right there, that's Ukraine. Well, where's Russia? Russia is out of fuck now. Oh. Okay, that's that's China. Where is Ukraine? Um, it's up in here. I know it's one of those. It's one on the of border those. of Russia. Yeah. It's either the blue or the green one. One of those two. Mm, right here, the big blue one. The blue one. That's Ukraine. Is it? Russia's right here. They went all the way around this way and came over that way. Wow, that's... Yeah, so yeah, it's China, and then we, they went o over the entire top, right? Whatever that means, and then they attacked. This, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the society that we live in. So you ask yourself, if these people are poor, and you claim to be intelligent, and you're poor, then are you really intelligent? Then are you really intelligent? These are the dumb fucks that are poor. Hell, some of them even have money. 
ask yourself where you are in the totem pole. Very efficient. They did. Where is Ukraine on a map? He's wearing a mask. Guarantee he doesn't know. Argentina. There. So where's Russia? Russia? This one. <laughs> That's Ukraine. Oh, so where's Russia? Yeah. <laughs> that, so Ukraine and Russia is the same country? Ukraine, yeah. <laughs> so you think United States should get involved? Well, like... United States is right here and here's Ukraine, so I don't know I don't know why we wouldn't, yeah. Just send some troops. Bro, he's acting smart, bro. Look. up here, take a boat here, and then just block. Uh, I don't know. Is that real? W in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have the intelligent people in society. We have the intelligent people in society. Hang on, we got some super chats. I'm going to attend four-year state university on an athletic scholarship majoring in computer science. Is it worth getting the degree? Not paying anything, by the way. Well, it all depends on what is important for you within the next four years. Now, first you need to ask yourself, is the state university you're going to, right? Is the weight of the diploma going to outlast, uh, you know, or supersede your initial investment? Because your investment in the university isn't just a monetary investment, it's an investment of time. Imagine you had four years of full, dedicated, uh, undisturbed focus to work on your goals and, and accomplish anything, right? I think you could learn everything that is computer science related and get a high paying job without having a degree, but having a lot of experience. Uh, so it depends on what exactly you're going to be doing in computer science. Um, but if you're working in... Uh, the software side of stuff, it's a lot easier for you to get jobs uh, that are not technician related uh, or that require certifications that there's plenty of companies that will hire for that. So, I mean, you could you could attend four years, waste half of your day um, partying and being stupid, or you could utilize, you know, half of your day to build a business with the skill sets that you're learning. So it all depends on what your goal is. Um, let's put some Drake lo-fi again because I'm kind of vibing with it. <coughs> w in the chat, we want some Drake lo-fi on this Thursday evening, this wonderful Thursday evening before we go ahead and get started watching the most powerful banker in America. For the people that just jumped in, I hopped uh, in, I think at about 1130, it was my lunch time and I said, I am going to uh, get educated. So I turned on something about banks and eventually it led me to Jamie Dimon from Chase Bank uh, documentary. And I watched like five, 10 minutes of it. And now I wanna share it with you guys because I didn't finish it, but I wanna watch the whole thing. That's kind of what I'm doing here today. We're gonna watch this, it's gonna be phenomenal. Uh, I know we had another small super chat. Uh, just started reading uh, scientific advertising. Great read. Congratulations, bro. You'll learn a lot. Um, make sure that you guys are taking notes. Okay, taking notes of the of the things that you're reading in the book, so that then you have those highlighted on a separate uh, piece of paper, right? And this piece of paper will basically be your your cheat sheet for a lot of data and information. All right, before we get started, do we have any questions in the chat? Let's do a quick AMA, 10, 15 minute AMA. We're gonna watch uh, the most powerful banker in America. And then we're gonna wrap it up. Hi Luke, remember me from yesterday? Joku, appreciate the two bucks. Luke, I spent 150 uh, on ads for my dropshipping store and got no sales. Should I keep trying to store or look for a new product idea? Cause so here's the thing, right? You can't quantify something on a $150 budget and know whether or not it's going to be a winner. It's not enough money to determine if a product is a winner. You have to look at multiple things on your store, right? If you're doing e-commerce, multiple things that are going to determine whether your product is going to sell or not. One is going to be your store, uh, just how it looks, the generic appeal of it, the first impression. Two is the offer, right? What is the price? What is the value versus price interaction and relationship with the customer? 
right? Uh, what type of interaction do you want to have with the customer, right? Do you have a monthly recurring product or do you have a one-time product and then the customer never interacts with you ever again? So there's a lot of different alternatives, but if you spent $150 on ads and you haven't gotten any results or any data, you're either not looking for information because initially you're paying to obtain data, right? You're paying to get your ad out there and receive information. You can't expect sales right off the bat. It's not just gonna magically sell because you spend money. It's not how it works, right? You don't just spend money and make money. You have to strategically invest your money in the right place, know what you're wanting to get in return, right? And then from there, you're going to extract your ability to, to get your ROI. Uh, and with $150, you should at least have some sort of data point of whether an ad set or a keyword is working or not working, whether, you know, something in your uh, add to cart ratio isn't really adding up. So people aren't even adding the product. It could be your product images, your description. There's so much. You, you just have to test it all, brother. Um... Uh, Somebody said, are you going to talk about the diamond industry? Yes, we can talk about the diamond industry. We can do a full video breakdown on those. I'll have that planned out. Music is too loud, somebody said. No, it's not. It's perfectly fine. When should people start investing in crypto? Well, I just put in a short, a Bitcoin short at 24.3K uh, for, for, I think it's $150,000 short. I'm expecting like 20 grand to make 20 grand on the place. So not a whole lot, but just a, a little bit. And then I have another ETH short at about nine, 18, 1800, uh, 1850, something like that. And that is about 30 ETH uh, short. So it's like 50K. So I have about 200 grand in open uh, positions on a short that I just opened today. So we'll see how those go. Um, People said you can't really hear me. Let's see right now. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me better? This is like the best it'll, this is the best it'll get. Check, 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 one, two, if you guys can hear me well. All right, this is, uh, this is as good as it's gonna get. Can you guys hear me now? Check, 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 Anthony, are we good? Somebody said, should I put money in Bitcoin? Right now, you should be focused on making money. Making money. That's what you should be focused on. You know, Bitcoin, crypto, the st stock market right now, it's walking on fucking eggshells, the whole thing, right? The whole thing is just walking on eggshells. So we gotta be careful. Um, Yeah, I would I would be careful right now with any sort of uh, investments. It's a it's a very risk on asset, and we need you need to act accordingly. Why would you buy it? What's your goal? To make money? To then sell at a higher price? It's just not worth it at these prices right now, honestly. You, sh I'm just shorting it because to me it just makes sense. Bitcoin just had a forty percent rally up pretty much all the way, with very little determinant. So. Maybe, maybe it goes up another 10% and then it drops 20%, 30%. So it's just a, it's a decent risk reward trade that I'm, that I'm on. But you know, I make 20% on the trade, that's 50 grand, you know, just late, late change on the side. It's not, it's not too shabby. Um, if you had to start e-com again, what would you do? The first thing I would do is I would get really, really good at customer service. The second thing I would do is get really, really good at systems and operating systems uh, that are scalable. And then three, I would really focus on advertising. I would focus on finding hacks and and uh, and you know errors in the system that will allow you to uh, find you know trending uh, advertising styles or to find glitches in the system that'll give you. Uh, one ups on your competitors, you know, when you're advertising, you know, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter ads, all these platforms, they're man made. So if you understand that you can play them in a certain way, then you can print unlimited money. So 
I recommend uh, getting good at those things first and then bringing them all together into a business uh, that could be e-commerce. Um, but a lot of people want to focus on one thing, either ads or just product research or whatever. But there's so many verticals in the business that you have to learn. Um, you just got to get really educated because once you start playing in, with your own money, you're kind of in a situation where you're kind of stuck. Uh, let's see here. How can I capitalize on the recession and what coin should I invest in right now? Uh, so how you should be capitalizing on the recession. I mean, here's the thing about the recession, guys. If you don't have the last two years were your money making years, that's what you need to understand. Your last two years were your money making years. Those were the years where you should have made the bulk of your money. If you didn't make the bulk of your money over the last two years and got exponentially wealthy, right? If you were worth a hundred grand two years ago and you're not worth a million dollars today, like a 10 X on your money, which is very fucking good. Uh, then something happened, right? If you had a million, it's not 10. You're like, what happened? Because people multiplied their money in exponential ways that you wouldn't even fathom. So right now we are in a situation in the market where the market is contracting, right? Money's coming out of the market. Money isn't trading hands, okay? This is a problem, right? Because if you look at any time there was not a recession, not just inflation, but a combination of both causing a depression, uh, and then a terrible presidency and then midterms rolling around and then Trump just getting uh, raided and you put all these things together, then you're like, dang, how do you capitalize on the recession? Well, if you made a ton of money over the last two years, then deploying that capital sensibly into the market and finding cheap opportunities to buy up undervalued assets is the move. Otherwise, you should just be focused on making a fuck ton of money in business, hustling, figuring out how to make a ton of money. That's going to be the way. Otherwise, you're fucked. Like you, you're screwed. You're you sh don't miss out this don't miss on this opportunity, guys. Like really, don't miss on this opportunity. It's really fucking important that you not waste your money. Don't buy any bullshit over the next two years. Nothing. All this capital you have will be deployed into the markets. You can, you can delay the gratification of looking cool for like 10, for 10 months, for two years. You'll be cool eventually, right? You'll be, you'll be, you'll be flexing, but you got to do it at the right time. So, okay. How to keep high um, moral standards in the process of getting rich is kind of immoral and manipulative. I mean, not necessarily, right? What I will say is there are there are echelons of society where just getting to you're going to have to cause a lot of harm, right? You don't you don't just get to the top echelon of society by doing everything the right way. So I agree with you there. But I think uh, you can slow cook your way to success in a way that you don't compromise your integrity and your morality. And then, of course, you can say morality is subjective. What's wrong for you might not be wrong for somebody else, you know? Somebody may think that not paying their taxes is sinful. And then another person could th think that paying taxes is, you know, uh, the, the best thing you could do. So, uh, you know, morality could also be subjective. Let's see here. Uh, when you went in your money making journey, you doubt the future. Okay. So this is something I wanted to talk about. All right. Pen and papers, ladies and gentlemen. And, and this is something you need to understand. People will drop off like flies, you know, over the next couple years, they will jump, they will, they will fall off as flies because we're elevating at such a fast level that we're just leaving a ton of people behind and you have to get used to leaving people behind. So when I was going through my money-making journey, the only doubt that I had was, is what I'm doing correct? Because so many times I feel alone, right? I feel alone. Uh, and I feel like I'm just trying to figure out my own journey. And then I realized that the reason being is because I'm elevating at such a fast level that there is, there's a gap, there's a relational gap between other people. So people can't, I can't, I can no longer relate to the average individual because I'm no longer living the average life, nor am I operating under the same average rule set that most people are operating. 
So a lot of the the doubt came in, hmm, you know, like, is this worth it? Like, you know, you're gonna have to compromise relationships, family members in order to make it. Many times that's what it takes. And that's kind of what it took for me. So besides that, uh, you're gonna experience two emotions in your in your life and these two emotions you can control it's your it's your it's fear and anxiety these two states of being you can actually control if you uh understand where, where the source of it comes from so uh that's is it fear you could say fear anxiety and then the other one would be kind of uh sadness or regret regret usually comes when your mindset is focused on the past, right? And that therefore you get sad or remorseful. But regret comes from focusing on the past. You can't regret something that you haven't currently done if you're in the present moment. You may be regretting it in life, in life time, but mostly the feeling of regret is when you're thinking and living in the past. Anxiety and, and fear, uh, you know, the angst of something happening uh, is when people are focused on the future, not on the present, but focused on the future. So most people either live in the past or they live because they're sad and uh, remorseful, or they live in the future and they're anxious and, and afraid, and they're not living in the present moment. If you can live in the present moment, now you're in a situation where you're in control, right? So your, your emotions of fear and anxiety, uh, of dwelling in the past or dwelling in the future no longer exist. So, don't live in the past. Uh, do, do not live with remorse. Uh, if you have to close things in your life, close them. And then uh, continue moving on. Because if not, you'll be regretful. If you look at the future and you're only focused on the future, then you're going to live in constant anxiety because what you're currently accomplishing is not good enough. Right? You have to sometimes celebrate your wins. Sometimes you have to celebrate your wins. You have to take a fucking week off, vacation, like... What are you here on this world to accomplish? You're not gonna you're not gonna keep any of it. Zero of what you're making, you're going to keep. Rockefeller built, you know, a mega mansion in an estate a hundred years ago, and now it belongs to the state as a museum. You know, so everything you have eventually you will no longer have. You're just a steward of what you're being uh, entrusted with. And what you do with it is kind of what matters. So uh don't focus on the size of the box you're going to live in. That isn't really a purposeful way of living. Don't focus on living in the past. You'll be uh, depressed and you'll be sad because you're, you'll think of all the things you could have, should have, would have done and should have changed, but you didn't. Don't live in the future because you'll live with anxiety and you'll live with uh, what's next, what's next, what's next, and you're not in the present moment. So enjoy the life that you have right now and continue focusing on elevating. Like in, the, like in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue with these uh, questions. We got a, a ton of questions. Uh, we got Jordan in the house. Shout out to Jordan. Uh, Jordan says, what bank do you use? I have multiple banks um, in the US. I try to have as many bank accounts open as possible and try to keep, keep less than 250 grand per bank account because uh, your bank account is only insured, FDIC insured up to about 250,000. So you need to make sure that you are not having more money than that because it's no longer insured. So don't be stupid. Let's see here. Top three book recommendations. You can uh, go to Luke Belmar forward slash medium.com, something like that. Or just look up Luke Belmar and I have a list of the 11 books that I recommend that made me rich. Uh, Let's see here, let's see here. Hey man, thanks for awakening people. I have two years of experience as a developer. What are the chances that I find the right idea, the right host, marketplace, and it goes successful? The chances are extremely low. Welcome to business. That's why you should be doing your business research and, and, uh, and market research and product market fit before you commit to a business. Especially if you don't have money. You can't risk that. 